The following program may contain viewpoints and opinions that do not necessarily reflect those of Radio That Doesn't Suck Incorporated or its employees. Welcome to Real Estate Toronto, the radio show about buying and selling real estate in the greater Toronto area with Aura Ross from the Mulholland Ross Real Estate Team. 30 minutes of hot topics and indispensable advice from experienced professionals that work for you. Now, on with the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Toronto Radio and uh, with your host, Aura Ross. Uh, that's not me. I'm Todd Miller. Welcome. And good morning. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good morning, afternoon. Yes. And uh, I know you slept in today, so I know it's okay. <laughs> it's morning <laughs> to me and it's morning somewhere. That's right. Um, and, you know, just for our listeners, we now have realestatetorontoradio.com where um, people can go in and hear all our old shows. Great. And if it's yeah, and if it's easier to listen via YouTube, we've got them there on YouTube as well as podcasts. So, um, yeah, lots of opportunities to catch up on our old shows. No reason not to listen. There, there you go. I like that. That's a good handle. Take, can, take us with you anywhere. So, what are we talking about today? <laughs> well, you know, we have decided. We took a bit of a poll on on buyers that we were talking to about buying homes, new homes, new townhouses, new condos, and we asked them. And really, we did this sort of on behalf of many of our builders and our sellers and our stagers and our contractors. We asked the buyers. What would you love to see in your new home? What what would you love to see when you're shopping for new homes, new condos? What are some things that are important to you today? And I thought we'd share that because we came up with some pretty interesting responses, actually. I'm sure I can add a few more in if they're not on the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Stay- and what... Give me one thing that you'd like to see, Todd. Oh, uh, I'll get to it right after the break. We need okay. to take a break. You're listening to realestatetorontoradio.com. The music you'll hear on Out of the Blue will be jazz for the most part. No specific styles or genres. Every piece of music is handpicked to deliver quality performances. Out of the Blue can be heard on rtds.ca, live Mondays, 1 to 3 p.m., and encore performances Tuesday to Friday, anytime on demand. It's the true spirit of jazz, a touch of everything and then some. Thanks for listening. I'm Larry Green. selling a home, condo, or investment property may be one of the largest transactions you'll ever make. It's important to gather as much information as you can, and preferably from experienced, successful professionals. When it comes time to make your move, call the Mulholland Ross Real Estate Team with Keller Williams Real Estate Service at 416-230-8500 or visit www.realestatetoronto.com. Whether you're making your first move or selling your much-loved family home, the Mulholland Ross Team offers over 26 years of real estate sales and service across the GTA. Listen every Sunday at 4 p.m. here on Radio That Doesn't Suck to hear the team share advice and information that will assist you with your personal wealth through real estate. Questions or topics you'd like to see covered? Email info at realestatetoronto.com or call the Mulholland Ross team at 416-230-8500. Well, there may be a sort of new website, but the phone number has remained the same and the location is the same. Absolutely. A wonderful new office. At 246 Shepherd West in Toronto's Willowdale West community, Young and Shepherd. A, a very fine community. Very fine community. And, you know, if you're ever in the neighborhood and, and have a quick real estate question or would like to know what something sold for in your neighborhood or you just need to use a washroom, stop in and we'll make sure that you're all set up. Awesome. Yeah. So... Exciting topic today. Exciting topic. I mean, who doesn't love to talk about what they would love to see in their new home, whether you're buying a new home or not? I mean, look, at bring that up at any dinner party and it's going to take over for an hour and, and people might not, not even be making a move or renovating, but they still love to talk about what they wish they had in their new home. And from what I've discovered in my own personal experience recently, 
Mm-hmm. I, I have the technology thing. I want to get in the house and I want to set the TV up and the stereo and the entertainment. And my wife being more practical is setting up the kitchen and getting clothes out, you know. Oh, yeah. So everybody's got different things. You're right. So so funny you bring that up. Number one on the list is the smart home. People uh, want the ability from their phone or their iPad now to turn that alarm on, which we know some of our service providers allow, right? Turn the alarm on, turn the lights on, turn the heat up or down. So there's all sorts of things out on the market um, now from thermostats to to lighting, everything, alarm systems, where you can, from your phone. So, um, so this is what I love. We have a showing booked on one of our listings. And I will actually get a text message from my seller sitting in his office saying the appointment hasn't shown up yet. And why does he know that? Because his app on his smartphone is telling him the alarm hasn't, you know, the door hasn't opened yet. Uh, well, funny you mentioned that because uh, I, I got that offered to me. So we set it up here at our new facilities yeah. and it is great. There is something cool about laying in your bed. And just before you get in, get up, you adjust the thermostat up a couple of degrees Ooh, before, yeah, you like actually, that. <laughs> before you pull the covers down. It's pretty yeah. sweet. And and definitely for families where they've got younger kids coming home from school, uh, you want to know that your child walked into the house at four o'clock or whatever it is. And I'm not talking, you know, the, we've got the cameras and all that stuff, but I would say the number one thing, one of the most popular things we heard from people was that, that ability, that smartphone ability to watch their house. So, um, that that was a big one on the list. I I got to tell you, I was shocked about a couple of the responses. I thought we would see a much higher ranking on the the efficiency items. So um, the insulation, mm-hmm. the geothermal heat, solar panels, um, anything that I thought getting off grid would be a little more important to people, but it looks like the toys are taking precedent over the practical. Now, is that an age thing? I mean, I would think that being more, you know, earth friendly would typically skew to someone that's in a younger demographic. Just my opinion. You know, I'd have to actually cross-reference that one, so it's it's I can't really comment. But I, I was disappointed because I mean, when I when when I asked when I was posing the question, I had I, I had put my own answers already on the page, and the very first thing on my on my list was LED lighting and germ, geothermal heat, solar panels. Those are my first three. Really? Yep. You have to have a really good southwest facing house to do that uh, those solar panels and the geothermal heating I would think geothermal goes into the ground so it oh, doesn't right, matter where right. you face but solar panels you're right you're right it, you need you need that exposure and um, certainly adding something like that doing a renovation and adding um, geothermal heat may be cost prohibitive but if you're building a new home and you're spending seven or eight hundred thousand dollars doing it spending the extra 30 or so to go geothermal, in my opinion, if I was buying new, that would be really important to me. I like the idea of getting off grid. Yeah, and I mean, it just it just says that um, even when you're considering a new house, those things are easier to put in while you're building than aftermarket. But as I've learned, you can still retrofit a lot of this stuff into an older home. It's not prohibitive to do it. It may cost a little more, may take a little more time, but it's possible. It is possible. You're absolutely right. And um you know, so the, the so here's another one that actually was fairly high on the list. It wasn't at the top. Um, elevator. Oh. And this has been my question, you know, with all the new homes going up around our city and everybody talking about the demographics. We are walking into um, a period of time where our seniors are going to uh, outnumber our young folks. Um, they're still in their homes. Because, you know, our seniors are staying a little more active and all that stuff. It's a little surprising. So where the comment came about the elevators was not so much people saying, I want an elevator. The conversation was more, we are shocked we're not seeing them. With everything going on and the changing demographics, we're surprised that a builder who's building a two or what's, you know, now almost a three-story home now where that garage is raised up are not at the time of build adding that elevator. I mean, it would keep people in their homes longer. It would open up, you know, it would it would create a bigger buyer pool of people 
you know, in the coming years, more people would be able to use that home and purchase that home. Even for in-laws that come and visit, it's like, mom, we got you up on the fourth floor for your, you know, your nanny suite or your in-law suite. And and then, you know, mom's got to climb those three or four sets of stairs or take the elevator. Or what actually happens is a lot of families trying to adapt their current homes for their parents turn their family rooms that beautiful family room with the fireplace they actually wall it in Mm -hmm. and they they create the nanny room or the the grandma room or grandpa room sorry Mm -hmm. um the and and so you know it was funny a few years ago we had a builder who was um building beautiful homes and nothing different other than he made his main floor powder room a three-piece and his theory was if you ever have your parents over, they can sleep in the den and shower on the main floor. And I was shocked how many people would come look at the home and go, why would you make the powder room a shower? We don't, you know, and it's like, who cares? What what do your guests care if there's a shower in the room that they're using to go to the bathroom? But it, it doubles as another perp for another purpose for your senior family that even come to visit or, or live in with you. But I think it's a brilliant idea. I think Elevators, it is. Oh, main yeah. floor, three pieces. You know, why not create ease for our, for those of us who are aging, well, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree because I, I think on, on most main floor where you have a powder room, there's typically a closet on one side of it. And it's not really that much work to to shoehorn in a, in a, a very functional shower. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I think if you're building a home today and you were thinking about your own uses, your own uses in 10 years, 20 years, and who might be living in that home after you, suddenly some of these things start to make sense, right? Yeah. The, bu- the builders building on spec are not thinking that. They're not worried about who the buyer is in 20 years. They're going to sell it this year. Right. So, you know, again, keep, in, keep that in mind if you're designing your own home anyway. Um, another big popular, big, big popular on the want list is separate entrance to the basement with potential for in-law suite. Nice. Yeah, and that's what we call job security as well, because I think a lot of families who want that apartment aren't actually looking to create an apartment today or don't want to have rental in their house. They're looking again at what if down the road. Uh, Maybe I retire and I'm going to travel. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone living in the lower level and paying our taxes? So, um, and of course, for our young buyers, it is a huge benefit. uh, What is that? Well, it just, it supplements their monthly income. I see. Okay. Yeah. Now, some banks, I know my friends at Scotia, will actually use a portion of of that uh, income to even qualify for the mortgage. And yeah, that's uh, that can push them into another type of home if they've got that regular income coming and they can maybe get something a little bigger. That's right. That's right. So um, if you are building or renovating, um, you know, and certainly renovating for the thought of maybe selling in a couple years, I'm not saying go out and add your kitchen and everything like that. But if you've got the bathroom, if you've got the family space and all that stuff, think in terms of how could this effectively be converted to an apartment. And if there's little things you can do, the value of your home goes up. Yeah. And and again, what I'm hearing you say is don't think about your needs now. Think about your, keep in mind your needs in the future. Keep keep in mind. I mean, you know, in previous conversations, my, my thinking is your house is your home. And if you're buying a home for a 10 or 20 year plan for yourself, then I only want you to think of yourself. You know, I, I, I get concerned when I have people, you know, or even our buyers, you know, they're buying a house or somebody's doing a renovation and they say, you know, I'm thinking of renovating my bathroom. Will I see my money out? And I say, how long do you plan to live in the home? And they're like 20 years. And it's like, honey, in 20 years, whatever you renovate today is dated. Yeah. So will you get your money out? I'm pretty confident your money will come out in 20 years. And so for those people who are doing things to your home, think in terms of this is your home. You love it. This is your sanctuary. Do what's important to you. Um, If you're thinking of selling in six months to a year, then you might want to be more in tune to what are the buyers looking for today. Exactly. Exactly. We've got a minute left before break. Anything short we can cover? Um, Okay, I got a little one, um, which is pretty obvious, actually, and that's the high ceilings. Everybody wants those 9 or 10 foot. Now we're seeing 10 and 11 foot ceilings. (laughs) You want them until you have to paint them, and then it's like, oh, why did I ever get those ceilings? Or change a light bulb. 
you know, when you have to call in help to change a light bulb, you know, we've got some design flaws going on, but. (laughs) Well, in one of my previous houses, I had uh, lights over the stairs going into the basement and it was probably a good uh, 14 foot span before where where you stood to where you could change the light. And it was almost tempted to go and rent a cherry picker to go and change the light because it was just. Uh, yeah, how's that going to well, happen? My theory, and you know, all these new homes with their beautiful outdoor lighting, same thing. You have to hire someone with uh, extended ladders and scaffolding to change the light bulb. So my theory for you guys is when your light bulbs go out in those hard-to-reach places, just call us. We'll sell your home, and we'll find you one where, where all the light bulbs are working. And you'll, <laughs> you'll throw in a, a couple of free light bulbs, will you? We w- absolutely. Absolutely. On us. On us. Okay. We're going to take a short break. You're listening to Mulholland Ross Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back after this short break. Annoying. Frustrating. Of course, you're referring to me. Some days. Enlightening. Engaging. And now you're referring to yourself. Most days. (laughs) Just a few of the words employed to describe our show. The Mots. You'll come up with your own. Hi, we're The Mots, Paul and Carol. Inviting you to join us weekdays at 2 on Listen Up Talk Radio at talk-radio.ca. And there's an encore performance with Mots Weekend. You can check us out at themots.ca. Here's another word for you. Oh, I wouldn't go there. Hi, it's Paul Capelcante, host of The Vinyl Experience, with a couple of magic numbers for you to remember. This is real simple. Are you ready? Here we go. Nine and three. Every Sunday at 9 a.m., 3 p.m., 9 p.m., and for good measure, 3 a.m. on Monday. This is all Eastern Time. Your times for The Vinyl Experience. Welcome back to realestatetoronto.com radio. Hey, thanks for having me back. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're um, here every week. I know. You deal. can't you can't get rid of me. Yeah. Um, you know what I thought it would be important to mention. Uh, you know, we're talking about everything that buyers want and and I don't want this to be misunderstood to you guys out there who are thinking you're thinking of selling your home um, I know the number one question sellers have is should I renovate before I sell should I fix up and do those things I definitely don't want people walking away from the show thinking oh my gosh if I'm going to sell my home I have to raise the roof and I have to um, add solar panels and I have to change all my light bulbs and and I have to renovate my kitchen and 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 that you know we, we you know this is a common thread we we talk about in the show that if you are, you know, selling your home and you're thinking you're going to renovate first, do call us because we will tell you whether or not to spend the money and 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 how to best go about doing it. Will because you... go, mm-hmm. ahead. go ahead. Well, it's just that you know some homes you can renovate a lot out of them, and and it's just not going to appeal to the buyers who are looking for that home renovated at this time. Our trends are changing so quickly across the city. So some homes, yes, it's not bad to do some some updates and some are best to maybe just clean tidy get your stuff organized and and sell as is and it really you don't make an assumption because all the homes around you are coming down with new homes going up don't assume then that you don't need to do anything at the same time don't assume you need to renovate just really give us a call because i'd so much rather save you a few bucks now Oh, and absolutely. frustration. Yeah. yeah. I think it's worth a conversation because even if you say I'm selling to a builder, I don't want offers for, you know, someone to live in it. A builder, as we've talked about, may want yep. to rent it out for a while. So it may need some updating, but that doesn't mean go crazy and change everything. It means what is reasonable, what is expected. That's right. And on the flip side of it, um, you know, sometimes we walk into these really lovely families homes um, but you know they haven't been painted since the early 90s so we've got a lot of dark green and maroon and an old you know brown carpeting and so on <laughs> no I know that's your style Don, and, and and yeah no no I know maroon that's your dark thing green those are my colors I know but um, so sometimes when it's a really nice house I would I, I, I get sellers saying well you know I was gonna paint it I was gonna do that but I know the we you know maybe the buyer won't like my color so I'm gonna let the buyer do everything and in that side, there's that. The flip side is, is, is if you've got a really nice house and it's just dated, things like painting and changing little details um, to brighten it up and modernize it can can really work in your benefit. So again, call us because we're we're going to be able to really quickly identify for you whether you should, whether you shouldn't. 
Yeah. And as we talked you know. about, I mean, sometimes a coat of paint, a buyer, a potential buyer can't see past that color scheme that you've got in your house. Uh, and as you said, exactly. just run it really neutral so that it sort of lets you see the bones underneath, not focus on the maroon color. That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, okay. So going back to what buyers want. So this is a unique shift in trends. Um, you know, 20 years ago, Buyers would say, I don't want to be near any big buildings. I don't want to see a big, tall building in the sight line of my backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to hear noise from any busy streets, right? Um, So it was all about privacy, sanctuary, and all that stuff. I would say that I know there's those of you out there still looking for that, and and I'm all for it, and that's amazing. Um, But I'm seeing seeing a really strong um, drive towards get me near subway, get me near the shopping, get me near, you know, young street, get me near that main artery. Um, Whether it be they want their kids to have easy access to TTC or themselves to have easy access to subway and TTC, or whether they just feel they want to be close to the action. And I have not heard anybody complain about seeing an apartment building from their backyard in I don't know how long. And that's probably because we can all see something from our backyard. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, unless you've in got you know, 40 foot yeah. cedars, yeah. which is highly unlikely. But so they, yeah. they or want if you're, the, unless you're not in the city. Yeah. Yeah. So they want the backyard and they want the the home experience or the, the house experience versus a condo. But they still want to be close to the amenities. That's that's right. So in some cases, we're actually seeing that property that backs onto a busy road close to subway, you know, actually seeing more value come out of that. The buyers are willing to pay more for that than when we take them to this little tucked off road off the beaten track close to a park and a ravine. It, it's interesting because I can tell you 20 years ago it was flipped. It was flipped. Hmm. So so trends change for sure. Um but anyway, that seems really popular. Being near Subway, wow, hugely popular. Um, the other thing that I asked a, the, the, a few people, if you were building a home, what is something you would absolutely make part of that property or, or not make part of the property? So we had a big thumbs up for brick and a big thumbs down for stucco. Oh, which is interesting because I know a lot of builders use stucco and hey, you know what, uh, we're seeing a lot of stucco on the sides and the back of houses, but there's no question the brick all around is definitely uh, a more sought after look. And it's funny, you know, about five, ten years ago, maybe even a little longer in that Willowdale area, people were stuck it, stuccoing over the brick and bringing a, a newer, fresher look to it. And you're telling me now that it's it's kind of less oh, desirable. No. What? No, no, that's a different thing. When you Uh stucco over an old brick house, um, that does give it a nice clean look. And remember, you're still solid brick. Mm. You're not taking the brick away. You are a brick home. What that stucco does on an old brick home is it's an amazing insulator factor, insulating factor. So if you've got a little bungalow, you're going to stay in it and you're going to renovate it. Stuccoing the outside is not a bad thing. I wouldn't take that away from you. I think that if you're building a new home, the buyers today still consider brick to be the richer finishing on the outside. Mm. Now, we're also seeing a lot of arts, crafts homes, modern homes. So we're seeing an, lots of alternative exteriors. We're seeing metal uh, panels, which I personally am a huge fan of modern homes. So I'm loving the different products we're seeing on the outside. I'm seeing... Um, You know, the brick, the stucco, the metal, or the brick, the stucco, the stone. Uh, So we're seeing combinations really beautifully done. But generally speaking, people are saying, you know, they'd much prefer to have the brick than the stucco. I think part of it, too, is in in Toronto especially, we're kind of a dirty city. You put a nice, light, bright stucco on your home, and in a couple of years, it may not look so bright. Yes, that's true. And you you power wash it, and it's coming off. Yeah, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, the other thing, uh, which I think is really funny is, um, the amount of buyers that say, I do not want a flat roof. And I got to tell you guys, I have a flat roof. It is awesome. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Flat roofs live a very long time if they're done properly, properly. at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. What, what, but, what is it that, that appeals to you with the flat roof? Um, well, first of all, I like the aesthetic look from the outside because, as I mentioned, I'm a, a modern house kind of gal. But um, our flat roof has uh, got a lifetime of 55 years, 50 to 60 years. 
Hmm. So where people say, oh, a flat roof is expensive, well, yeah, it does cost a little more, but you're getting a much longer period of time out of it. And the only thing for those of you out there with flat roofs can probably attest to, when we have those massive deep freezes like we've had the last few weeks, sometimes in the middle of the night you think that something landed on your roof, and what it is is it's an ice crack. Oh. You'll actually hear like a crunch sound, and it's just the ice on your roof has cracked. Hmm. Interesting. But there's nothing wrong with them. So why I'm bringing this up, too, is when a few people said, oh, I don't like flat roofs. I would never buy a house with a flat roof, so on. Some of the new homes you're seeing around you, if you look, their front pitch is a fake. It's just a facade. You look behind that front pitch, and some of those roofs are flat. I've seen those, yes. It's like a, the old flat tops. You know, you had a little wave at the front in your hair, and then it was flat back after. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just for show. Yeah, it's just for show. I mean, let's face it, when we're going for our height, when we're building new homes, that roof pitch is considered part of our height. So when you go flat roof, you can get a little more space inside too. So. And again, that leads to higher ceilings on all the floors. Yeah, that's right. That's right. What What about you, Todd? Uh, as far as, so here was the other one. I asked people, modern or traditional? Modern or traditional? And I, I ask almost all of our buyers um, that. I mean, certainly looking for new homes, it's my first question, modern or traditional? And it is amazing how many people like modern but are very nervous about it and they think that perhaps um, it's a trend that will go out of style so they, they fall back on the traditional. Um, and today we have builders calling their work transitional. So they're taking modern elements and putting it into the more traditional look and feel of a home so that the buyers can have a bit of both. But what about you, Todd? What are you, modern or traditional? I think anything you choose, whether it's traditional or modern, it will become dated and you have to be okay with that. I mean, if you go for a house that looks like a barn, you know that it's out of style. It may come back. Uh, and similarly, you may get something that's ultra modern, but in, you know, four or five years, what is considered modern may change and it may be retro. We may be going back to barn door yeah. basements. So you kind of just have to be okay with it and know that at some point in time, you know, you might have to change it. But um, I kind of like a blend. I'm in, I'm in a house now where it's, it's from the exterior. It looks kind of very old, but when you come in, it's got a very modern kitchen. Um, it's got elements of both. So Okay. There's your transitional. Exactly. You know, that's, yep. Yeah. Yep. No, that's great. That's great. So for sure, I think that is our most um, popular want right now on the new homes is people want that. They want that modern feel like that modern open concept kitchen, but they like that traditional, the moldings, the traditional moldings, a nice fireplace, things like that, that make it a little more traditional. And I like my house a little schizophrenic where you, you're looking at it and you go, I can't decide <laughs> if this is, uh, you know, a farmhouse or, you know, an upscale condo, you know, but yeah, yeah. Okay. You like it all mushed in there. Just one room to the next. You can't tell where you live. How, okay. Here's another one for you. Corner versus non-corner. Your house is on a corner property or a non-corner property. Does it matter to you? It depends on the... It depends on how busy the street is. If it's a depends business on the street, corner. then you've yeah. got traffic coming both ways. And also with corner lots, sometimes they're a little irregular. So it makes it a little challenging where you look from the front, you go, wow, we've got lots of property. And then because it goes back, you've got a very tiny backyard. Okay. Okay. So on the flip side of that, because I'm, see, we're so opposites, Todd. It's amazing we get along. Um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> um, I like a corner. Now, I would agree. I, I, I may not feel that way about siding on to Bloor. Um, Young and Bloor, I mean, great place to put a house. Yeah, actually, that would actually be an awesome place to put a house. But um, I may not want to be siding onto a very busy street. At the same time, I love the idea of being on a corner in a quiet neighborhood because um, I can have more more lights, more windows, more garden, um, you, you can, know, a little more space on my on that side of my property. You have another house jammed right up beside you. You're absolutely right. One less neighbor. Not that I don't love my neighbors because I do, but definitely one less <laughs> You know, if you're having if you're having a party or something, as long well, as it's on that na that neighbor. So we're not talking about you, that neighbor. We're talking about the other neighbor. That's right. We're yeah, the, take a my short neighbor break. that's listening. You know, I love you. Yes, absolutely. We're gonna take a short break, <laughs> and we'll be right back on Aura's last radio show, according to her <laughs> neighbors. Real Estate Toronto Radio. .com. What? Welcome 
back to realestatetoronto.com radio realestatetorontoradio.com we have a new one i'm gonna have to break that one down i know we'll have to get you into that script yeah 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 so um todd you ready to buy to build your dream house now that you know Yes, I know what everybody else wants, and I'm going to build the perfect house that will appeal to every buyer. Everyone. So, so that I can yeah. sell it right away. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, on that note, um, I'm sure, you know, the, the one thing we find is most of the people we're working with, when, they're, when they already have a home, now we call them second-time buyers or move-up buyers, right? I have a house, and I'm ready for my next one, my bigger one. Um, and we do find that that's they, that's actually a big question for them. Do I buy something built, or do I build where I am, or do I buy a lot in the neighborhood I want to be in and build there? And we've talked about this before because you know the debate is: do I buy something already done, or do I build a new home and get everything I want? Yep. Right. And uh, it's a huge question. Again, please, I invite you to call us. We will share everything we've learned over the 30 years via our, our own decisions as well as our hundreds of clients who have had to make these decisions and what the pros and cons were. Um, I know that building a home is a huge full-time job, even if you've got the best builder and, and there are some awesome builders out there, but they, you really need to be involved in this process if you're building a custom home. So it's a lot to think about. It is. And the first starts with a conversation, a cup of coffee with you to figure out what you want to do, because you obviously have a house and you don't know what to do with it. So talk to Aura yeah. and her team and, and figure out where you want to go from here. That's right. That's right. You can reach me at 416-230-8500 or log on to realestatetoronto.com. And spend Sundays with us, would you? 4 p.m. every Sunday. And, and you can spend Saturday afternoon with us if you want. If you're listening to podcasts, we are available 24-7. Not live, but, you know, we have lives. <laughs> we'll catch you right back here next Sunday.